Good to see you, everybody. Thanks for coming here. And it feels good to be together again. It's Friday, February 24th. And this is week seven of our class. I cannot believe how time is flying by. So today we'll do a review, like we talked about, um, jumping into our content from last week. And we'll have a discussion and start our next chapter of the beginning thing at workbook. And so when we come into class, go ahead and use these. Um, it's okay if you talk over each other, but go ahead and just unmute your mics and talk to me. It's good to hear your voices. Wasa ye a tea, you hon. Stuga hat the tea. Okay. Ach to sigu. Okay. You go ahead just Okay. The tea. Okay. I'm trying to say I'm tired. What <laughs> uh, What Ah, uh, to the wet. Ah, uh, 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 um, Everybody, repeat after me. Uh, this one in the lower right. Hot wood the wet. Ah, uh, okay. And again, one more time. You sound good. Any questions on these? Okay, I'm liking what I hear. And we'll do this every day just so it becomes second nature over time. And so I just asked you all, what's that EAT and you answered? Now, um, ask me, what equa? What equa? Quick dialogue review. These are two dialogues we pieced together two weeks ago. And um, let's repeat them line by line to practice pronunciation. Everyone, 
Repeat after me the first line. Yake Ixatini. What at Okay. And the next dialogue. Wasa iati. Wasa iati. Yake wa echoa. Yake wa echoa. Yake achtuwu segu. Yake achtuwu segu. Ah. Would anyone like to volunteer to practice being person A with me in the top dialogue? Oh, I haven't done it yet. Okay, I'll try to be brave. Yay. <laughs> I love you. Good you. Which one am I? You're I'm person A? A. Yeah, you're A. Yak A Satini. Goodness gee, that wasn't so bad. <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. I loved it. You sounded good too. Oh, goodness geez. Uh, how about any volunteers to be person A in the next dialogue? Ati. Wasa iati. Yak e wa echoa. Yak e ach tu wu sigu. I didn't do that quite right. <laughs> yes, you did. You did it right. I loved it. Yay. Loved it. Your tones sounded good and everything. Yak e ach tu wu sigu. I could hear them. Ah, uh, any other volunteers for uh, the top dialogue? Anyone want to be person B? No takers yet. That's all right. Well, no pressure. This is just for fun. So, you guys sound good. <coughs> So, jumping back into the beginning thing at workbook, we're going to start chapter 2A, and if you don't have it yet, I'll put the link in the chat to the online PDF file, which I teach from since they're teaching online, and it's available, so... I'm putting the link in the chat and then go ahead and open this up when you're ready. It'll look like this. And we're going to start it. It begins on page 43. It's chapter 2A. And it's called Da Sawa Iatin. So go ahead and repeat after me. Uh, one more time. Okay. And so for this chapter, we're going to um just look over the first dialogue and we'll start identifying verb roots. So little by little, since this is a level up class, we'll jump a little bit into grammar, still focusing on pronunciation, um, but getting to know how the sentence the sentences work and then coming back to pronunciation. So looking at our chapter, um, it opens with this quote that came 
from a traditional prayer in Tlingit by C. Alaska Heritage Institute. They published it. And um, it means so that too, we may protect our land and our culture for those yet to come. And we're going to practice reading it. And we'll do this one uh, about two to three words at a time. So I'll ask you all to repeat after me. Um, first, just these two first words. Repeat after me. Aqa awa. Aqa awa. Aqa awa. Iden gach tushlatin. Iden gach tushlatin. Patatke. Patatke. Taha kusti. Taha kusti. Ah, it's 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 ah, Edengach to Latin. Edengach has to g yes. Okay. Good night, okay. That's awesome. Can you um on that first line, the third word in, will you say that slow and loud? Ah. Uh, this one has a pinched K. And when you have a pinched letter followed by a vowel, you'll snap the K and, but also let the air flow through your vowel. So sometimes um, a temptation will to be to do a glottal stop, which would sound like eh, uh, but it should be eh. So um, let's do just that first half, the pinched K and the I. Everyone repeat after me, eh. Eh, 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 eh. Yeah. And so, so uh, is, is it, it not, go ahead. Um, is it almost, I mean, I, what I can hear, it sounds like it's a silent K, but I'm thinking that I'm missing actually what it is. Like I'm okay. just hearing the I. <laughs> okay, Gunachish, that's good to hear because um, what's happening is my mic is. Um, cutting it out so can you hear i just changed my settings does it sound different now yeah, yeah. okay thank yeah. you okay okay yeah. okay i'll make sure i turn on that setting each class uh and then the yeah. second okay and then the, oh yeah so the first half is everyone repeat after me yeah. 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 and then the second half is a high tone E and it's a long E I. So it sounds like Dane. 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 Yeah, so the whole word is Dane. Yeah. Jeez, that was helpful. Okay. I'm glad you told I'm me not caller. my mic. Yeah. And so we're at different levels in this class and so my job is to push everybody from the level you're at to a little bit farther and this will be um, different for each person in the class but what I want to focus on today is identifying verb roots. So what Khane has done in this page 
is he took that whole that whole prayer we just read and he did what's called a gloss which is a grammatical breakdown of each component and each part of the every word and phrase and sentence it looks like uh, non-language it looks more formulaic and so that's why for me when I break these down it's important first to look at the written language the way you would read it and pronounce it uh, internalize the sounds practice them memorize them if you if that's something you want to focus on and then what we'll do is take a little bit of a glance at the grammatical, looking at it grammatically, and then jump, go back to pronunciation. So what this does for us as adult learners is help. it helps us wrap our minds around the way you think in Tlingit, uh, since it's so different from English. And this is a lot, doing a gloss is, it takes a lot of grammatical knowledge, but the starting point for beginners, I would say, is just identifying the verb, the root of the verb. So the way you do that, when you're, well, the first sign that you're looking at a verb root is the square root symbol. This is how we signify that what follows the square root symbol is the verb root and for beginners that's enough that's all you need to know to kind of take your knowledge to the next level and i wouldn't worry about anything else in here yet um is anyone in this class already familiar with identifying verb roots okay okay a couple people and so if you're already familiar with identifying verb roots, the next level I want you to look for is identifying the classifier. And the classifier takes place right directly before the verb root. So every verb will have a root and a string of prefixes, which are just one syllable sounds that precede the verb root. And then, um, if you know the classifier, that helps you understand um, how to give a more specific meaning to the root. So for folks who um, already know verb roots, um, what you would be looking for is this LA directly in front of the verb root and saying, okay, this has a classifier, it has an L classifier. And so let me show you an example of how you would put this to use. So we see in the gloss that the verb root teen corresponds directly below it to the, the verb root meaning, which is watch. So if we go into the verb root database, uh, I'll put this link in the chat as well. And I know this is gonna seem like kind of a lot at first, but um, we're just going to kind of take baby steps into it so that you slowly get a look at it and more familiar with it over time. And so that link I just put in the chat is for this verb, verb root database. And the way you access this, this is why it's important to be able to identify verb roots because it gives you access to looking up action words in Tlingit. This database lists all the verbs by their root, which is your starting point. And so here I took us to the verb root teen. Uh, this is the one we're looking at here from Gachtuchletin. And we know it means to watch. So we're going to kind of look at how do I know that? So if you look in the verb database, it has a list of English meanings. Um, to travel, to see, or to watch. And if you select the verb root, you can click it. It'll expand into all the variations of the more specific and varied meanings. <clears throat> Any questions so far? And again, this is a very um, grammatical look, kind of analyzing, analytical look of the language, 
which I've been learning through time as I progressed into intermediate and advanced phases that is necessary for me to push past. I would kind of plateau. I usually rely on pronunciation, speaking, and memorization. Um, but as a as a new learning learning speaker, um, I would I could tell I needed to push past. So I'm I'm just taking you there, baby steps. So we expanded the verb routine. Now we're looking down and we can see all these different English meanings highlighted in yellow. Um, it could mean to travel, to watch, to see or have sight or to catch sight of somebody, to see it, perceive it, to have sight in general or to be blind. And so as in English, travel, to travel is pretty different from watching and seeing. And so this is how Thinget makes use of one verb root to have multiple different meanings. And for those of you who are comfortable with identifying verb roots already, um, what you're going to notice is the difference in classifiers. So the classifier will start to take you the difference between to travel, to see, and to watch. So we're looking at our source here. In this case, we're looking at the gloss, but even if you're looking at the written language and you're able to identify teen as the verb root, you know that comes right. what comes right before it is this sh sound. And so I'm going to look for that in my database. And I see it here. So if you, if you look through the different options, you see options for classifiers. All these um, markings that go right before the square root symbol are your classifier options. If it's a zero classifier, um, then it could mean to travel. If you scroll down to the one with the L classifier, okay, now I'm getting what I'm, what I'm seeing in the text. It means to watch or look after. Um, whereas if there's an S classifier, a S sound like you see in, for example, um, one thing that we say is yake Do you hear that S before the teeny? This one lets you know that what you're doing is seeing somebody. It's good that I see you. But in our example from our text, it was uh, so that one we hear a and we're in the L classifier, which lets us know, okay, we're talking about watching or looking after. And um, just taking you a little bit farther, we see these prefixes, so besides the th classifier and the teen verb root, now we're looking into gachtu. And if we are ready for that, we can scroll down till we see it. As a beginner, what I would do is just literally scroll through all of these options because you have a plethora of variations of how to conjugate this verb. Um, in my case, when I was pretty new, I would just out of curiosity, scroll down till I find what I see. Oh, here it is. This looks like it's the future form for we will watch it. And so everybody repeat after me just the the thing at word Okay. Uh any questions on that so far? So as we do these grammatical explanations, I'll just start to take you a little farther and a little farther. Like I mentioned in the beginning of class, um, these classes are designed to be a little bit uh, past your comfort zone. <laughs> so we'll have our comfort space and then we'll be like, oh, this is a little bit of a reach for me. And then we'll come back. Um, <laughs> that's how we do it. Yeah. Okay, so this chapter opens up with a dialogue and um, 
again, for folks who are curious, you can kind of look right and see the gloss, the grammatical breakdown. Um, but for now, we're going to focus on reading and speaking. So what I'll do is take you through the short dialogue line by line, and you all can repeat after me each line, and then we'll do a little activity with it. So everyone repeat after me this top line. Wasaiyati. Wasaiyati. Khatiyake. Khatiyake. Klingetke khia akhch. Klingetke khia akhch. Yeah, pretty good. So this one, when I first learned this word, I had to start at the very end and work my way forward because you have a variety of sounds that are not in English. And so what helps me is to start with the very end. So that you see the beginning with this high tone A, then it goes into a loose gravelly back of your throat underline X, and then flows right into a CH. So the second half of this word doesn't have any pinches. Your body is going to try to pinch since you pinch this first underline X. It just wants to do it again naturally, but we're going to practice from the end. No pinches. Everyone repeat after me. Ach. 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 Mm -hmm. One more time. Ach. 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 Love it. Now the first half, uh, let's start from ya. Yeah. So, ya yeah, ach. Ya ach. Yeah, that sounds good. I can hear your glottal stop and ya. Yeah. So one more time. Ya yeah, ach. Ya yeah. yeah, ach. Yeah. Now this first part is e. So everyone repeat after. It's a back of your throat gravelly underlined x but it's also pinched so you're kind of pushing it out so just the underlined x e e repeat after me e. 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 yeah one more time e. E. yeah and then yeah one more time yeah, yeah. Oh, it's hard. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like when you're in a workout class and they're all do burpees and you're like dripping sweat. <laughs> mouth aerobics. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's total mouth aerobics. It's like you're doing tones, pinches, underlines, and you're using a wide range of your instrument. I can't even get that glottal. Oh, the glottal in yeah. Yeah, so the way I describe the glottal is when you say uh-oh, you're doing a glottal stop. Yeah. Uh-oh. Yeah. It's the same thing for like what uh. Oh, that's that's better. Yeah. And then do this one. Yeah. 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 Uh huh. Yeah. So one more time, this word, and then we'll do the whole line. Yeah. <laughs> and then the whole word. Yeah. <laughs> And one more time. Klingetke ia acht. Yeah. Ten more burpees. Ten more burpees. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So we're dripping sweat. This is good. This is my job. <laughs> and we're gonna we're gonna give it a rest you do, you don't need to master this in one day we did a, like we worked it now we're moving on okay next one 
a skund ka idol tu. Yeah, there. I like that how you added the W at the end too. So let's do from ka i to dul tu. Everyone repeat after me. Ka i dul tu. Ka i Yeah. How do you say the last part of that, please? Yeah, the last part is dush and then two. So the W, yeah, the W at the end of uh, of syllables gets pronounced in Tlingit. And sometimes in English, it gets skipped. Like in when you say ah, uh, or like ah, uh, like something is really cute or awesome. Yeah, awesome. You you just say ah, some. You don't say awesome. But in Tlingit, you do round your lips for the W every time. So uh, everybody repeat after me the last sent the last word. Dush tu. Dush tu. Okay. Ah. Uh, okay, next line. So ye ik kwasatin. Ye ik kwasatin. Go al kushe ye wutik. Go al kushe ye wutik. Yeah, so let's practice. Yeah, let's practice the last two words. Ye wutik. Yeah. yeah, the K is underlined, so again, it's in the back of your throat, but it's not pinched, so it's like teek. Teek. Oh. Uh, one more time, the whole line. Go al kusheye wu teek. Go al kusheye. Okay. And two more lines. Hande Ejin. Hande Ejin. Gonachi. Yeah. Gonachi. Gonachi. Okay. Any questions on these? So since we're focusing on identifying verb roots, we're going to go ahead and do that for all of the lines in, in this dialogue. Okay, let me zoom in. And so for this top line, um, is anyone able to identify the verb root? Is it teen? Yeah, away. And what helped you identify this as the verb root? At the end. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's your number one indicator. So it's usually at the end of a verb. And you'll gain familiarity with the different prefixes where you'll start to recognize a pattern and you're like, oh, that's a verb. The thing at the end is the root. Um, and as a starting point, you can say, okay, it's the at the end of the verb. So it's probably the root. The only time where it won't be is like, for example, if you have a postpositional phrase or, or if you have a relational suffix, so sometimes, like an ex for example, we'll have um, where the um, teen is the verb root and it doesn't quite come at the end because you have this i after it. And so sometimes you can have a suffix where the suffix is just letting you know this is connecting it to another verb. 
So it's good to see you. You have two verbs that it's good, which is yuk a. That's a verb. Yuk a. It is good. And then to see you, ich satin. Ich satin is I saw you, but you have a relational suffix to connect it. Like um, it's like to see you. So um, other than that, it's usually at the end of a verb. Okay, what about in wasa e? Yeah, ti? And do um. Do you guys want to look this up? Should we look up the meaning of T? Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. So we have a verb root T, and now we want to look it up. So we go into the database and close our previous search because it can get a little bit much. And right above it, we have T. We have options for T and if you're really digging, I've been in this situation before where I'm expanding all of them and searching through all of them. Um, we can just kind of start from the top. I expanded the top verb root T. And uh, this one is such a common, like widely used verb root that there's lots of options. But I'm going to kind of scroll through until I find a zero classifier form. Because all I have is yeti. It's not isati, it's not isati, it's yeti. And scrolling down, I'm looking for zero classifier yeti. Wasa yeti. And here it is. So it's short, simple, to be a certain way. Um, if you're not sure from looking at the theme, this formula looking string of letters, you can ex you can click the yellow highlighted meaning to expand it and scroll down until you find your exact copy. So we have uh, yay can be swapped out with wasa and we had wasa iati. So how are you? So we could put to be. Okay. I have a question. Can yeah. So the classifiers, is there a list of them? Are there a lot? Are there only a few classif classifiers? Like, I guess you just have to memorize, learn, learn them, right? There's a, there's a chart. Um, let me find it and give it to you. But there's a chart. There's only four. There's, it could be s, s, Zero. Let me let me double yeah. let me fact check. Show the other one. Uh, What's that? Zero schle. Sh is sh and sh. Sh. Can it be sh? I need to check. I need to I need to um double check. But yeah, the, those are that's a good question. Those are the types of sounds you'll hear and identify as the classifiers. I'm tempted to open it right now, but I'm going to do it at the end. It is sh. It's um, zero, sh, s, and sh. What uh, resource are you looking in, Wutaka? I'm in the um, uh, reference guide, the verb reference guide, because I knew it was right at the back. <laughs> oh, okay. Let's, I'm going to open it. I should it. look in the, I look at, well, I have the different uh, copy of the workbook, so I don't know where it is in the workbook. Okay. So, Probably in the back. Ah, goodness, Chief. So, Jai, if you're wanting to look them, you can go on clinkitlanguage.com under resources, and then it'll be under inter intermediate materials. And you'll scroll down until you get to the Clinkit reference guide, expand it. And it sounds like it's, and I'll, I'll just put this link in the chat so that you could just click it open. And 
if you go to the back what page was that utaga um I was gonna try Nuskinkat uh, Ka Dahun eighty four. Okay, that would be Nuskadu Shujin Kat Kadahun. Nuskadu Shujin Kat. Okay, I'm gonna shish. Ah, so let's go to eighty four. This is such a good reference guide. Um. For people that are looking to understand the breakdown and here we have the classifier charts uh for me personally these charts i'm not able to learn from them alone i need to connect them to an actual word so for folks that are at that intermediate level identifying classifiers what i recommend is looking at these and then referring to an actual word and then looking back um because you know, it's this to me, this doesn't look like language. I need to connect it to something. So we have zero classifier, uh, L classifier, S and SH. Um, so for example, let's look at the verb we have open. Iati. Um, ye iati. So I have a zero classifier and when i look at the actual form conjugated for you are that way specifically it's a um e ya t and then look at the classifier chart and what i'm having is a zero classifier because we saw it in the database and it's appearing as a ya and for now, unless folks have questions on it, we're going to stop there for the classifier discussion. Any questions? No, I'm going to ask Chish for digging in a little. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm happy to. I'm glad you asked. Also, her name is Jay, just because I know sometimes we're shy to do that. And so I'm doing it in case you felt shy. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I called you Jai. You can just correct me if I get anyone's names wrong. Okay, Jay. Gunachish. So next word we have khatiake. And what's our verb root? Yeah. For yeah, yeah. Which one is our verb? In this whole phrase, where is our verb? Ah, yeah, yek a is our verb. And so which part is our verb root? I guess yak. Good guess. Yeah, the verb root is k. And so we'll put it in blue. And we'll make a little note here. Okay. And we want to we want to put the meaning, so we're gonna look it up in the database. Close et. And look up k. And here I see it listed as a verb root to mean good. And so looking at the way that we describe things as being good, uh, you could be improve something, uh, to be in a state of being happy, glad, or feeling fine, um, for something to taste good. Um, maybe you've heard someone say, <laughs> they like the taste of it. It kind of means like it's good to their mouth. Um, Good weather, kuwake, the weather is good. Um, or just plain old good for something to be good. And you can kind of see the breakdown next to the, the theme for an object to be good. Another thing you can look out for for folks who are starting to think about objects and subjects 
Um, the capital O in a theme is for object. And the way we think about who is an object and a subject in a verb is sometimes different between English and Tlingit. So just have your mind opened for something to be good. Um, that thing can actually be the object. So that's why you say instead of um, which I don't know if that um, if people are at that level yet, but the I am the object. So is it? It's more like um, it's good to me. It's I mean, if if khat is the object, it's good, pleasing to me, good to me. Kind of, yeah. That that's that helped me start to make sense of it when I started switching into the way the Tlingit language thinks. Kind of like generally an object, it's like it's happening, to, a verb is happening to the object. But that might not <clears throat> be necessarily like the way an elder would describe khatyake to mean. They might say, well, it means I'm good. But So this one is the verb um, to be good. <clears throat> okay. What about in Slingitgeach? Where's our verb root here? Yeah. Good good really good guess. So I heard somebody say "ach," and um, this one is actually another situation where there's a suffix. So this suffix kind of it's let's take a look at it. So the verb root here, and it just takes some familiarity, is "ach." <laughs> yeah, and let's look it up, and then I'll show you how the suffix appears. So we have ach. I'm just gonna go to the top. Ach. So we have ach to listen. Listen to it, play it, understand, comprehend. Um, if we look back at our word, the way the phrase is written, we see that um, one of the sounds we have is a underline pinched X. For me, that signals, okay, I need to look for a, a variation where there's a Kh at the beginning. Um, because a pinched underline X isn't usually any kind of subject, object, or classifier. So it's kind of adding a, another specific meaning. It's sort of like a signal. Oh, here's your low hanging fruit. This one's um, kind of a giveaway. Um, and then we have a variation with a CH. So as a beginning learner, I would look at both of these and be like, oh, I think it might be one of these two because I hear a in the and but then I also see an ach. So let's take a look at them. And we can see different options. Still looking. Repetitive, imperfective. Um, hmm. this one I need to actually look more into to be able to describe it accurately. But the, uh, the form for it can have a habitual or a repetitive mode, in which case you do see a CH at the end, even though the verb root is ach. Understand. Uh, 
Okay. And then um, if we want to double check, we can look back at the source where we got this from. And that's why this beginning can get workbook also has a gloss for us so we can look down. Okay, here's the answer. It's kind of like your answer sheet when you get into that level of breaking down the verbs. How are you guys doing? Is this a lot? Two thumbs up. Head nods. Okay, good. All right, good. Okay. So here we identified our verb root. Ugh. And okay. Next one. Ah, uh, oh wait. Ah, skunk ka idul tu. Yeah, wa tu. So we'll put our verb root here. And then we can look it up. And this is just to help us start to be able to use this resource. We're leaning on the crutch of already having the answer in our beginning thing at workbook. But what this is helping us do is start to understand, oh, this is how you use this resource. This is how I look up different variations of a verb by their prefixes. Teach. Ah, to teach, okay. And so we do see that uh, L classifier, and we're looking at the database, dul tu. Skun kai dul tu, so to teach, kai dul tu. Teach it to us. Um, so teach it to us, scrolling it down, they are teaching it to us. This, this is a situation where the verb database doesn't have the exact variation we're looking at, but one thing we can, because the, it only has the third person singular subject, so it's saying do ik al tu, that person singular is teaching it to them, so Ours is kind of like a fourth person subject, which we'll get into this much later. But du is like for it is being taught. It's kind of passive. So we have to teach. And how about in Suye Ekwasatin? Teen. Ah, teen. And the meaning for that one. We have the classifier. What's the classifier? Sa. Sa. Huh? Yeah. Uh, sa. So when I look in the database, I'm looking for something with a lowercase s to signify a s classifier. And that's the one I'm choosing. I'm scrolling down till I find what I want. And here it is. Ours has an ikquasatine because the i is the person we're seeing, which is you, the second person. I'm seeing you. And we put our object at the beginning here. So to see. And how about go al kushaye wutiq? So we have tiq, and what I would do as a beginning learner, to me, my first guess would be the whole syllable tiq is the the reverb root um but this one the next thing we would start to learn 
is this suffix, this underlined case. Let me zoom in. This underlined case suffix gets added at the end of a verb root. Um, kind of like you're saying, I hope it will happen. It's not certain. And so you're adding that k at the end. So in this case, the verb root is actually t for something to be. <clears throat> and we'll just keep it at that level for now. Um, but if you were looking at this guakushe, you could kind of correlate them. Okay, we have these sort of go together. Okay, to be. And then gunal chish is a hard one. Uh, this is an interesting word. If you were to guess the verb root in gunal chish, what would you guess? Chish. Yeah, mm. what? Yeah, chish. And gunal chish is apparently a verb. Uh, I've heard my friends say that it means without you, it's not possible. So that's a way of saying thank you. And to kind of look at the breakdown, I would go, it's kind of interesting. It, I, it's just fun for me to look at this stuff. You have your verb root chish, you have your L classifier, and then you have an implied tlesh, and then some question marks in the gloss, like we're not sure how this really breaks down. But I really liked hearing from my friend uh, who said it means without you, it's not possible. Okay, any questions on identifying verb roots or any comments from anything about class today? I like it. It opens your eyes to how to even begin to look it up. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Good Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, I really appreciate looking into classifiers here. Very helpful. Okay. We'll keep doing that. I'll make some activities that have the classifier involved. And, uh, Anything else? Any comments or questions? This okay. is being recorded, right? So we can go back and review. Ah, uh, yeah, it's recorded, and it'll Kone will put it up on our page for Hatuch Lachish on his website. So yeah. Thank you for your work. I know it can be a little tedious. For me, this is like naturally energizing to me because it's the way that's the kind of thing my brain likes. But I know that it's not for everybody and it can seem like a lot. But um, I just want to say thank you for for doing it for going there with me. And um, for your homework over the week, you can just keep looking over this chapter, uh, practice the dialogue. And if you have time, you can read ahead to the first 10 words of our new vocabulary. Not required, but it's pages 46 to 48. We'll work on them next week. And, uh, oh, I got to put my screen back up. One sec. Uh, share. Okay. Yewush uh, tustin. I'll see you again. Yewush tustin. あ、ね、ケ。ケ。ケ。ケ。ケ。ケ。ケ。ケ。ケ。ケ。ケ。ケ。ケ。ケ。ケ。ケ。ケ。ケ。ケ。ケ。ケ。ケ。ケ。ケ